Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I drew this cute little curled up hedgehog. It's actually on drafting film, which is a slightly different surf surface to maybe you've heard of or are used to, but it's got some really great qualities. It's great for um, working on textures, great for the slice tool. You can draw on the back. It's actually kind of transparent, so it makes it stand forward a little bit more. I really hope you enjoy the video. So I start by lifting up with a kneadable eraser just to make sure that there is little pencil showing through because otherwise you will see it and once you put the pencil down, the colour pencil, it's really difficult to lift it back up again. So starting with the eyes, going in with the dark sepia and just leaving the highlight free and then going in with the bista and the nugget and then adding some ivory, the lightest part that I can see, the lightest fur that I can see. It's almost like a base layer down to the skin. And then I'm going in with the Bista and going in with a layer. The great thing about drafting film is that you don't need as many layers as you would normally do on any other surface, any smooth paper. You can get a really good texture without putting that many layers down. So now I'm going in with the Nugget and the Walnut Brown, the Van Dyke Brown, and just building up the darkness around the eyes. There are some areas, I've just put some blue in the highlight there, that always makes them shine and some black around the edge to make them look a little bit more beady. That always helps, but then darkening up. And sometimes you can't tell how dark to go until you put the darkest points in. So the eyes and possibly the nose. Gone in with the dark sepia. I've lifted up a little bit with the slice tool and then I'm adding some more layers of brown. So you can see it still takes quite a lot of layers, but you'll notice that you put lots of layers down, you put lots of colour down and then the slice tool does the work for you. So it puts light colours over the top of dark and it just looks like an amazing texture. You're scraping back to the drafting film. You don't need to put a base layer down with this one. So really darkening up around the eyes and around the nose and then using the slice tool to just lift any lighter hairs going into the highlighted parts and making sure that you're just lifting it back up. So you want to go a little bit darker than you, the finished look, because you can lift it back up with the slice tool. So going in with some lighter browns and some ochres, just darkening the eye, making sure there are some hairs that go over the top of the eye to make it look more realistic and then just darkening around the nose and the eyes again. Once you've sliced with the slice tool, you can feel the difference in texture and then adding pencil around it, you don't lay it down as much as you did before. So you're always going to have that texture there. Going in with the nose now, I'm going in with the dark sepia first of all, going in with the darkest parts and then adding some brown, some greys, some blues and then darkening up with some dark sepia, some walnut brown, some van dyke and then black just into the darkest parts like the nostrils and around the nose. And once I've got the nose in, I can see that I need to add a little bit more fur around the nose to make sure that it's not looking like it's stuck on. Using the slice tool to pick out any highlights and then just darkening up around the face again. Just making sure that you can see when you zoom out, it just looks a lot better. Sometimes you can get caught up on how it looks straight away, but I'm going to follow that pattern now through the rest of the body. So going in with the nugget and the bista, adding lots of layers. But you can see it's so many less layers than it would be if you were using any other paper, pastel mat or smooth papers. Going in with the slice tool of just adding a little bit more detail, just putting the ears in so I know where they are, going in with the walnut brown and the dark sepia, darkening them up, adding some little lighter hairs over the top of the top, the top of the dark with the slice tool. And then going in with the warm greys just to soften any pencil strokes and get rid of any graininess. There's an interesting texture to drafting film that you will see start to come through when you're adding lots of layers. But if you just carry on building up and then scraping away with the slice tool, you'll start to see that it will really look 3D very easily. And because the paper is transparent, it looks like it's lifting off. So you're able to create that 3D look without as much effort as you normally put in with any other paper. Darkening up around the nose again, adding some more dark sepia and just making sure that it's all balanced and there are some highlights where they need to be. You'll find that if you finish a section, you'll get it about 80 to 90 percent done. And then when you start adding other sections in, you'll realise how much darker you need to go. It might be that you need to lift up some highlights with the slice tool, but generally it's about going darker. And that's what's going to create the shape of the hedgehog, making sure that it's darker in some areas and then the light catches in others. And that looks like it's standing forward. 
So going back in with the warm greys and the lovely browns that we've got in our polychromo set, the polychromos work brilliantly here. And then I can go in and darken up into the clumps and then lift up the highlighted hairs or bits of fur on top that works so well for any kind of shaggy fur, spiky fur, anything that's got a little bit of a texture. It's just brilliant. Dog hair, cat's hair, it's just fantastic. Give it a go. I really recommend it. It's something I think once you get started with the slice tool on drafting film, you won't want to do anything else ever again because it's just so addictive. Just be careful you don't slice too much and make sure that you use the side of the blade, not straight down onto the paper because you will cut through. So going in and just mapping in where the little feet are going to go and then the clumps of hair around the feet. And I'm slicing as I'm going. So I'm not leaving the slicing to the end, which I'd normally do with smooth paper. I'm slicing as I go, using it as a tool to layer up and see how things are going to look. So I'm always going in a little bit darker than I want to. And then I can slice up the light hairs on top of the dark and really give it that texture and depth. Softening off with the pencil going in for a few more layers, slicing in between, and then making sure I'm blending through the highlights so it's not completely light. There are some dark hairs within the light that's really important too. Sometimes it's really tempting to leave things really light, but actually it's too light. You need the values correct. And so I'm just adding in some more layers of ivory now. I always like to zoom in in between sections just to see how things are going. And with the little paws, one tip is that you don't try and draw paws because you will get yourself into a little bit of a pickle. What I tend to do is just think about the shapes and the colours and possibly adding the shadows in around them. And then the fingers or the little paws start to emerge. I'm not trying to create that shape. I'm almost filling in the shapes around the pools and you can see I'm really going in with the dark, dark sepia here and then the, the pools start to take shape, adding the little claws and then darkening up as I need to, getting that texture in, darkening up in certain areas and then I can use the slice tool to lift up the highlights and any hairs that need to be put over the top, I can add it in with the slice tool. Doing the same thing with the other pool, you see I'm adding the shadows there in between the fingers, I'm not trying to fill in too much of the detail first of all. I'm just mapping in the shapes and working out where everything needs to go and then the little paws start to emerge on their own. Going in with the slice tool, lifting up the lighter parts and then darkening up where needs to be darkened, adding some textures, some browns, darkening up through the claws, making sure there's shadows parts there. They don't look like they're just part of it and they don't look like they're standing proud and they've been stuck on. They look like they're all part of the same drawing. Lifting up the lighter hairs and now I'm feeling a little bit more confident now I've got kind of a third of the way through that I know that laying down the base layers of the lighter fur and then gradually building up through the browns, some ochre there, some terracotta, some greys and then slice tool in between. Just adding some highlights of cream. I always think that's a really good pencil to use. If it looks a bit yellowy, go in with the cream first of all before you start adding yellows because the yellows might be a little bit too bright and the cream is warm enough that it's just going to give a lovely shine and lift it without adding too much yellow so that it starts to look a little bit unrealistic. Going in with the slice tool again between layers and now I've got the next section in I can go back in and just darken up any shadows that need to be darkened any of the shadows between the clumps of the fur and then I can go in and just map in where everything is the fur tends to get a little bit longer as I go down through the body just be aware of the direction of the fur and the length of the fur because that's so important if you start putting random bits of fur going horizontally or kind of scribbling them in it really will start to notice so think about how the fur is cur curving around the body to create that form so you're trying to recreate that texture through the pencil so if you're thinking about how that texture would feel how long the fur would be then that's a really good way to start adding some form and creating the shape so you can see the fur is a little bit softer, it's not as textured, and so I need to smooth it out a little bit more, still using the slice tool, but I need to smooth out all around this section, adding some of the ochre as well, putting the little paws in for the back feet. There's a bit more detail here, so again I'm just adding the shadows in first of all, and then the shape of the paw will just start to emerge, and I might need to fill in a few colours 
using the slice tool. This is the bottom of the foot, so it's little beads and little beams. It's just so interesting. A lot of it was shadow, so that was nice to create. Uh, and I was just adding the shadow and the shapes around the little beams. Some of them were circles, some of them were hexagons, some of them were rectangles. It was just depending on what was going on. Just softening the edges, darkening up where I need to go. And then I can go in with the slice tool just to lift up any highlights that are there, which really help to make it pop, to make it look 3D and to bring it to life. Adding the claws with the ochre, brown ochre. And then I'm going to go in with the next one. Second one's always easiest once you follow that format, going in with the shadows, first of all, mapping in where the little toes are, creating just shapes. You can see it's just a collection of shapes and colours, and then the, the foot will start to emerge as you just soften everything, and the toes will be what's left in between. So just darkening everything up, adding the browns and the dark sepia just to glaze over the top and darken everything nicely. Going in with the slice tool just to lift up any highlights, adding the claws, darkening them up. And then we can go in and add some more of the fur going in with the warm greys and the browns. Thinking about the direction of the fur, it was all over the place here. So I was really being mindful as to where the fur was going, which direction it was going in which shape. And it all collects into the centre as well. There was like a little swirl of fur where the belly met the back of the hedgehog. And so I needed to be really particular about which direction that fur was going in. I followed the reference photo. I really kept looking at it. So looking at your reference photo more than you think, more than you draw, just to get that right, because that would have looked quite messy if I'd have got it wrong darkening up more than I wanted to to begin with or more, more than I wanted the end result to be because I know that I can bring in the slice tool as I am here and add some of the lighter hairs on top of the dark and it just makes it look so much more textured. I like to zoom out just to double check and then adding some burnt sienna and darkening up around the toes. If you zoom out just to look at it as a whole you can see which bits need to be darkened which bits need to be lightened and it's so much easier just to see. The paws were just fading into the background because they were all very, very similar colours. And so I was making sure that I was adding the shadows around the foot in order to allow them to pop out a little bit more. You can see how much darker I needed to go. But I could only see that once I stepped away and zoomed out and just had a little look to see how it was looking as a whole. Glazing with the dark sepia, always a fantastic one to do. Really great for shadows. You don't lose any of the colour underneath. You can still see all of the texture that you've put in, but it just darkens the thing as a whole and it just looks so much more realistic when you go darker. If your drawings are looking flat, that's probably what's going on. You need to go a little bit darker, maybe, than you feel comfortable with. Once I darkened everything, I then could go in with the slice tool and just lift up any flyaway hairs over the top, doing the same around the top paws as well, and making sure that I'm not going over the claws too much. And the same effect was happening there, going in with the shadow, going in through the clumps, working my way up all the way up to the face and just glazing some areas that need to be darkened. This was so much fun to create and it was so much quicker than using any other paper. You can't lay as many layers as you can with smooth paper, but the slice tool really makes up for that. It's so much fun. I'm just adding some more glaze over the top to make it look complete. Having a look at the little face, putting the spines in at the back, going straight in with the dark sepia, just thinking about the shape, making sure that they're going in slightly different directions, adding the highlights, and then adding some more layers of that. I was quite lucky with this one that there weren't many prickles to put in because they're always pretty difficult to do. Some down the back as well, adding a little bit of cream and the ivory and some just poking through at the bottom. So just darkening up around that and zoom, just adding some darkness to the nose and the eyes to finish. And just checking that it all fits together nicely. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see the full tutorial of this hedgehog, then it is available in my online membership, The Joy of Drawing. I will leave the link in the description box. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and possibly share it with friends that you might that might enjoy it. And I really look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.